Hi, I'm Vicky of Vicky Mouse Creations. Today I am going to share with you how to make a laptop bag from an old pair of jeans. So this is my laptop. I'm off out for the day tomorrow. I've got to take my laptop. Super excited. Don't have a case. I love working with jeans. So I've got an old pair of jeans here. And I'm going to show you how with jeans, a zip, some fusible fleece and an old duvet cover you can make a laptop case from an old pair of jeans super quick and easy so let's get started so the first thing we need to do to make our laptop case is measure the laptop we need to make sure that the case fits so this is just about 30 inches that way and 20 and a half that way. So the most important thing we need to do is ensure that the bag is wide enough. This is my jeans. So if it's 30 all the way around, we need the opening to be 15 and a half or a little bit more, just to give a little bit of wriggle room. We want it to be um, snug, but not too snug. We need to be able to get the laptop in and out. So the first thing I'm going to do with my jeans is put them in the crotch. Separate them out. And then I'm going to cut, let's just think about this, this is going to be the laptop case, just cut the jeans off here. And repeat for the other leg. Unless I want to go One side plain and one side pocket and waistband. So, these legs are fairly straight, so that's really helpful, not too flary. If you've got flary jeans, that's not going to really work quite so well. So let's just see if that's going to fit. There we go, that is going to fit. Brilliant. And what about? that there, a little bit of the, is that going to fit? Yeah, it's going to need a good iron, going to be a bit snug, but it will. Let's chop a little bit of the excess off. So I'm going to give this a good press, both pieces, and I'm going to cut out fusible fleece 15 and a half inches that way. And I can't remember what we said this was all the way around. Because we've got to allow for the width of the laptop 20 and a half. So I'm going to go for the fusible fleece, which will be the stitch line um, 10, 10 and a half inches. So 15 and a half that way and 10 and a half that way, which gives me a little bit of wriggle room for it to fit. So I'm going to cut my fusible fleece, iron my denim, and then iron my fusible fleece onto the back of my denim. So I've ironed on my fusible fleece. This was precisely cut out, but as you can tell, denim stretches a little and you might have a little wriggly line. I'm going to correct that when I say, but first of all, I'm just going to trim it down a bit. So this is going to be the back of my laptop case. Here we go, that's the back and the front. It's 
going to get rid of as much of that bulk as I can there. Oh, not ideal. Right, let's look at this. So here I've got this that's just going to cut into my zip. That's going to be really awkward. So I'm going to just unpick that belt loop there. Because when you come in to do a zip, you don't need any extra bulk if you can avoid it. That's going to be easier to sew. I'm mindful of adding a little leather, you know, a little leather tag like you get on the corner of a, not on the corner, on the top of a waistband. So I've got one here. I don't know what pair of jeans because I tend to just save them. So I want to make sure that's um, not absorbed by the seam allowance. So I'm going to hand stitch that through the holes already existing in the leather there uh, with a strong coordinating thread. Just to add a little bit of detail to the finished design. I think it's worth spending 10 minutes. That's not even going to be that. A few minutes. Just sewing that on. So I'm just going to stitch on top of myself a few times, secure the thread. It's not going to be easy to redo once that's made. And as I say, I'm just going to go through the exist pre-existing holes from when this label was first sewn on whatever jeans. It was sewn on. It is a bit of a wriggle to find the hole when you come through from the other side. I'm not sure the camera's close enough for you to see that. But you get the gist. Just stitching that in place. So we can begin to see the laptop case coming together now. So I've gone for a zip that um, tones, ties in. So we're going to sew the lining first, so let's get the lining. I like to use old duvet covers as lining, I think you can get some lovely prints, this is from a local vintage shop, I think the duvet cover cost me, I don't know, £5. And look at all this fun print I've got for the um, for lining anything really. There's quite a curve there on the top of that um, zip. And the second piece. I have allowed a little extra here. This is so that I can turn it over, I've got a bit of seam allowance. This is going to be to stitch with no seam allowance. So, next up, shortening the zip. The zip's too long. So, I am going to cut it here. And then I'm just going to bind it really close to the edge. So this is going to stop the zip. The zipper coming off by accident. This is a sturdy zip. I, did, I have gone for a big, big zip, zip from my stash. I don't want a too flimsy a zip in this bag. There we go. One shortened zip, that was very easy, wasn't it? So I'm going to stitch my lining along, so I paste it right side down to the back of the zip, and then when I fold it over, that'll be in the right position for inside the bag. A zipper foot on my machine, and I'm going to start sewing along here. Doesn't seem too keen to set off, so there we go. When you get 
to the zipper bit itself, the pull. That's just lower your needle, pull it along, out of the way. Put your foot back down and finish stitching. Here we go. A wobbly line there. Let me just redo that bit. How happens to the rest of us? It's better. So I'm going to press that under, and then I'm going to repeat for the other side. Let me do that now. Whilst we're here. You might um, like to use pins or clover clips to hold this in place. So I've sewn the zipper into the lining. So the back of the zipper, the linings, as you'd like it when you open the back. Now the front of the zipper. So I'm going to sew this on here and the other side on here and then it will open up like that fingers crossed so I'm going to find some pins and then I'm going to stitch I've changed the foot to a walking foot on my machine because I know how it coats with denim and it's going to be much happier doing that so you might want to do the same so I'm just going to pin this zipper in place I'm going to give it a really good press so um, I'm confident my lining fabric isn't going to slip and get in the way. When you open your zipper you need to be a, you need to make sure your lining's not getting caught. So let's stitch this zipper in. I'm a bit concerned about the foot there, so I'm going to move it out of the way for a minute. And off we go. Right, so needle down, foot up. Let's see if we can move that zipper out of the way. Got a bit of a jiggle. I don't know whether it's going to go or not. Doesn't look like it wants to. I wonder if I can squeeze past. There we go. Right, I'm so right down here. In fact, I'm going to use my jig. This is a wonderful thing. So I put my needle down, lift the foot up, place it underneath. I've never used it with a walking foot because the idea is it lifts your foot up to the right height for the lump you're about to go over to which in this case is the, um, the French seam in the jeans. Now I'm doing this by hand because my, machine's, my machine is reluctant to go. Go on machine, just pull that a little bit. Right, and as we come down the other side, I'm going to use the jig as well because it just helps. And I might even be able to stitch again. Yeah, there we go. So I'm just using this until we're over that pump. Right, needle down, foot up, take the jig out, and off we go again. So you 
go. A bit of a bonus, you got some top tips for sewing through layers of fabric. So that's one side of the zip in. Let me show you that. There we go. And I'm going to do the other side. As an aside, it's held down the lining fabric on the back. So now we've got the two sides of our laptop case with the zipper running freely up and down. So we're going to fold the two denim sides together and the two lining sides together. Oh, and we're going to undo the zip. Very crucial. You'll never get in if you don't do that. We're going to line the denim up. And this side. Sure that the fusible fleece, which is our stitch guide, matches our side. This is that's better. Got to jiggle it around a little where you need to. What we're going to do is oh, that needs jiggling too. Um, There. Get the final stages now, nearly there. So, pinned all round, we're going to stitch from about here, round, across here. That'll be a bit tricky, you might need your jiggy thing again. Along round, round, across here, back to here. You're leaving a gap, a, a good few inches here, so that you can turn it all the right side out once you finish stitching. And then you're virtually done. right down here this is a zip bit this is important to get right and we're suddenly changing thickness of fabric the machine's gonna go ah! so to help it I'm gonna put in my jiggy thing Ooh. hopefully correctly not too key. It's a bit difficult to fit with a walking foot, to be honest. Here we go. Oh. Right. Let's do this by hand. Go on, go. Different machines are different, so it would be that potentially my. Um, on Benina, which is a, a bit more of a workhorse, would cope with this. But this is the machine I had out. So this is all we're going with. Now we're going to come down the other side. How's it going to go? Is it going to stitch? Yes. And we're off again. Needle down to pivot, and away we go. So you've stitched all the way round. Next, you're going to trim the corners. I've already done some here, here, here. Just going to trim that corner here. I'm going to be careful not to cut the stitches. Obviously, the less bulk you have, the easier it is to neaten the edges. And I have over these seams at the edges here a few times just to give them that little bit of extra strength. Right, let's turn it the right side out. Always like this bit, it's the exciting bit. How's it going to look? 
and will the laptop fit. So first things first, press out those corners as much as possible. And just push them out. That's one. That's the other. Right. What's it like? How do these bits go? These don't go nice and tightly. We might struggle to get our laptop in. So let's just push the lining in, check the fit. no point now doing the last bit if the fit don't work. Right, how far can that zip go? Yeah. So, let's see. Fingers crossed, eh? Oh, it's tight. hindsight it's just that little bit there might have you made it better to make it a little bit a fraction bigger right will it zip up yay there right we're going to take the laptop out now we're just going to finish that internal seam where we turn the right side out right so final seam So we've got this raw, raw edge here. I'm just going to press that in and those edges ends in. I'm just going to machine stitch along there and then it's all finished. So machine stitched along that raw edge, just turn it in and press your corners of your lining into the corners of your denim. All done. I might make myself a little leather tassel to go on the end of the zip there, but one finished laptop case.